something on your mind anytime. I'm here to listen, sister talk. When you need someone who understands, I know what you're missing, sister talk. No matter what you're going through, don't worry, I ain't going nowhere. Sister talk. If you ever feel alone, say the word, I'll be right there. Sister talk, sister, 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 sister talk, sister, 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 sister talk. Today, we have some wonderful guests here. Right across from me is Danielle Young, associate editor, editor from Hello Beautiful. Sitting right in the middle is Nicole Levon, an award-winning filmmaker. Before we get into the topics, I want to ask Nicole and uh, Danielle, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I am the editor, or associate editor of HelloBeautiful.com. Mm -hmm. I cover a lot of the lifestyle topics, women's issues, anything from rape to abortion mm -hmm. to Beyonce. Okay. So um, we are all encompassing everything that a black woman would care about mm -hmm. that they could find on Hello How Beautiful. How long have you been working at Hello Beautiful? I have been officially an editor there for a year now, but oh, really? unofficially wow. working there for a year and a half. Oh, unofficially working. Yeah, there. freelancing, you know, doing oh. little jobs here and there. Well, I see that you're doing a lot, a lot of work. When was your, who was your last interview you were telling me? Actually, yesterday I interviewed uh, Soledad O'Brien mm -hmm. for our Women Power series that okay. we are running next month on the site. So mm -hmm. just make sure you check that out. How did you get that? Yeah, I'm just curious because sometimes um, it's, I know it's hard for yeah. journalists to get guests such it's as the ones you know that you 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 got yesterday how was that that was a really um it was a circumstantial interview actually i went to shaka khan's 60th birthday party go ahead girl <laughs> <out of the> <laughs> um and then she was there and i sat down and spoke with her and told her about the women power series and she was delighted to be included oh, yeah. so. well that's great yeah. okay nicole levon aspiring not aspiring award-winning filmmaker mm -hmm. just tell us a little bit about where you are, I mean, where you came from, who you are, and, and, and all that. What are you doing now? <clears throat> well, I live in Manhattan mm -hmm. currently, and I just relocated back from Rochester, New York. Mm -hmm. I've done an array of films from mm -hmm. Homicides to Solutions, 110 Morningside featuring the open house of Abby O'Doon, the godfather of hip hop. Mm -hmm. And I'm currently working on a series now entitled Living Legends. Living Legends, yes. okay, what's that and about? And that's featuring Dr. Leonard Jeffries, Abby Odun Oyewole, oh, and oh. Jamal Joseph. Okay. And I'm tying that and twisting that in it with the people or the lives of people they've touched. Mm -hmm. So it's extraordinary documentary. Uh, we're in research and development now. We're so excited. We have an mm -hmm. Indiegogo campaign uh, right running, now. yeah, going on right now. Uh -huh. uh, we're in. Uh, actually, we just spoke to the Shabazz Center, so we'll be having mm -hmm. an event there on May 19th. I'm really excited about that, where we can highlight what's going on um, with uh, living legends. We're really bringing conscious back. My Senegalese friend says, Vilance. Vilance. Violence. What is it? It's a terminal disease that rots the heart and sends toxic fluid through the veins like a river in flame that ignites the madness in us, the sadness in us. Violence will punch you in the mouth, put a bullet in your head, lie to yourself and others. Only live to be dead. Do you think this is going to work, the gun control? Here's my take on it. From a media point of view, mm -hmm. when you have filmmakers such as people making films as Django, mm -hmm. and um, I wasn't really impressed with that because there was too many niggas in that film for me. Mm -hmm. Every time I I, I was listening to the film. It was like every minute and a half, nigga, 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 nigga. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this, this is a lot of niggas in this <laughs> film. And then, you know, with mm -hmm. yeah, what our country ahead. is going through right now, I think that it meant a, it was a temporary Band-Aid for a lot of black African Americans to see, okay, we saw him shoot some white people. But the overall message to me went a lot <clears throat> deeper than that. 
it went deeper because why would you release a film at this time? Yeah, exactly. And it was a political move. Yeah, I, uh -huh. and I I can agree with you on that. No, people <laughs> want to call me a conspiracy theorist all the time, <laughs> but I don't. I think that's dismissive. Right. Mm -hmm. um, when people don't understand or they don't want to open up and really see what's going on. Absolutely. I it's, it's, I know that we have topics, but I don't know if Newtown is here. But with gun control, yeah, I feel like it can't. The Newtown thing it is happened at a time where the timing was perfect, as you were saying with mm -hmm. the movie yeah. Django. Mm -hmm. um, it, it got us to focus on these poor kids that were losing their lives from a, a guy that had a gun that, I mean, he was evidently licensed but via see, his... But see, guns are out of control. But, but, guns are out of control in our neighborhood. He's never the only one. The, the news never informed... <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> the news made a statement that he wasn't the only one that shot those kids. See, the news is, they're leaving out a little couple they of things. Leave, that, t that case really That's, drives me crazy. Yes. Because You're talking about Newton in, yes, in Connecticut, absolutely. right? Absolutely. That, that boy wasn't the only one. There was another person. rounds in five yeah. minutes? There's, there That's had to impossible. be somebody there. So he had and a they knew they that. arrested somebody that was there. Mm -hmm. Now, it's ironic how the media has now, all of a sudden, we've, we've gone back to this one guy, this one kid, Mm -hmm. when there was more than one person. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a tactic that the media practices on a continual basis, and we need to be conscious and open up our okay, eyes. Okay, we're going to take this phone call. Call you watching this Talk TV mm -hmm. show. This is Dietra. How you doing? Hey, sister. How you doing? Okay, where's, what's your name and where you calling from? I'm Brother Mark from Harlem. How are you today? How you doing, Brother Mark? You called here before, haven't you? Yeah, remember me, huh? Yeah, I tried to. <laughs> yeah. All right, Brother it's Mark. Good to see you ladies up there mm -hmm. talking on critical... Um, subjects. Mm -hmm. uh, Sister Nicole, I want to thank you in particular for making the attempt to do that particular uh, film that you're about to do. We need that kind of consciousness mm -hmm. back in our uh, domain. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, oh, mm -hmm. What I want to simply say about guns real quick, I won't be long. Okay. The gun need to be eliminated, period. We should be talking about eliminating the gun. There is no need for a gun on this planet with human beings. Mm. which will lead me to who my favorite woman is. Mm -hmm. And if you're Jamaican descent, her name is Nanny the Maroon. Okay. Why I chose her? Because if, you, if you're of Jamaican descent, you know who that woman is. At that time, um, she stood up to the British Army and some kind of way, according to the story, mm -hmm. you know the story, she stopped the cannonball from attacking the people. And I feel like it's super extreme, you know? Mm -hmm. the, the reason for guns a lot of the time is for defense. You have to have some type of defense mm -hmm. against these people that are crazy and mm -hmm. they get the guns in their hands and they right. want to retaliate in, in whatever way they see fit. So saying that something is, oh, just wipe them out altogether, that's not really a solution it's because solution. that's just a, a hypothetical. Mm -hmm. um, but it's 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 a ways to go before we get to that. It's point. a long way to go. There's yeah. not, for me. There's no such thing as gun control. How can you control something? That's what something I was talking about. You know, how, how can so you fast. control that? You know, there is no gun, such gun thing. control. Really came into a policy. Really, really enacted when the Black Panthers went Absolutely. up to California. <laughs> went to California and they were strapped with guns. Exactly. And they had the second Second Amendment and said, right. "We are allowed to do this." Right. Hey, but hey, we got to move on. Mm -hmm. You know, Steubenville rape case. Mm. You know, last week too. Young men, 116, 117, was convicted of rape. Mm -hmm. uh, they were at a party, a pre-party to, to start the football year, and this young lady, she was 16 years old, she was uh, drunk, and they, they, they think that she was uh, had some type of date rape drug in her or something. Mm -hmm. And then they had pictures and everything of her um, being held up like a pig and so forth. I think the big, more of the big reaction, not so much that she was raped, is that the sympathy towards these mm -hmm. perpetrators, the rapists. When we talk about rape in this country, mm -hmm. it's, it's not even rape to me because we look at all these people, mm -hmm. and especially the young men, we don't talk about <coughs> young men that are being raped in the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. How many of these people that are grown? Oprah actually did a show about that. Mm -hmm. How many people were raped? And men don't come forward. Um, with this case that she came forward, I'm very happy that she did come forward because there's so many cases that are swept underneath the rug. Well, but she came forward, but she didn't even know. That's the thing. She didn't oh, even wow. know that was happening. But These idiots, mm -hmm. they put it on well, YouTube, Facebook, Facebook and they took pictures. My thing is that mm -hmm. not only should they have gotten convicted, which I'm glad they were convicted, but I really believe in my heart 
and the people in Steubenville knows this too. Mm -hmm. There are other people who are involved in it. Absolutely. They should, be, they should have been but dealt with. You got to look at our country. Our country has swept it always underneath the rug yeah. from our, our own history. Yeah. How many times have we've had a church that was right there while many of our ancestors were raped right there in the dungeons? I mean, uh, or wherever we were at. Rape has always been thrown underneath the bus. I, I agree with you completely. Mm -hmm. I, I read a, a piece in New York Magazine about a woman in the military mm -hmm. who had to go through oh, this yeah. long yeah, battle. Yeah, and it's a big thing the, in the military yeah, and the also. trial because they they tried they to pretend it didn't happen. Yeah. Right. And it's it's disgusting because people don't want to take that responsibility. Absolutely. They don't want to say that something is wrong with us. We are desensitized mm -hmm. in, in sexuality and we Absolutely. see mm -hmm. all this stuff happen in these movies. And yeah, it might be just entertainment. But it is ingrained in our brains. Absolutely. It's almost like a subliminal message it right, is, to right. get us to not see what's happening mm -hmm. when these kids are putting on Facebook because they think it's completely socially okay to share on social media right. photos of yeah, people. Yeah, crazy. You know, like you so said, <laughs> stringing her up like she's a pig. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Even, even some of the tweets that were coming through right. that evening of them saying that she was raped this, more than ra uh, or she's uh, deader than this yeah, and she was raped harder than this. Why? But do you know why? When we have... <laughs> Excuse me, Erica, I don't mean to throw you out there underneath the bus, but when we have artists that are doing that video with the blood and everything else with Erica Badu, what was the name of that? I can't remember. What but video was that? It was, it was okay to do a video like that. Then Erica, when she started getting bad rep on it, she went back and tweeted and says, well, it wasn't me, it was my sister. So you brought your sister to do it's a just, video to sit up there and subject another woman mm -hmm. to, to filth? Caller, you're watching Sister Talk TV show. You're talking to Danielle Long. Danielle Young, sorry, and Nicole LaVon, and me, Dietra. What do you have to say? Yes, I, I just want to say that everything that um, deals with um, us in the urban area, um, in our neighborhood, in the black society, anything that's negative sells, hmm. with the music, with the movies, if you do anything, like, if you preach anything like most deaf things about <laughs> the positive and what's going on, mm -hmm. with the genocide, all these rappers, what they, when, every time they think about something that's going on in our neighborhood, like the genocide, it does not sell. That's true. Anything that's negativity dealing with killing, murder, rape, it sells. Girl, and that's what is destroying the youth mind today. Mm. To me, they doing it, it seems like it's a secret genocide for right. us to get it rid is. of each other. It's gay marriages. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hot, hot topic, you know, you know, in the family, you know, people mm -hmm. are like, uh-uh, that's not right. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know if people get thrown out the house nowadays or, or mm -hmm. what have you. People pretty much accept it. That's my son. He just walks funny. <laughs> you know, that's my daughter. You know, she just walks. She doesn't walk like mm -hmm. other girls, but, you know, she's looking for a man. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> so, so what's your take on gay? Do you think it's going to pass? And I, um, I'm hopeful, actually, and, and I do think that it is moving in a positive direction. I come from a Christian background. I was raised, you know, gay is not the right thing to do, mm -hmm. whatever, but I understand God very differently in mm -hmm. my adult interpretation. God is supposed to be all loving, so right. I just, you know, I think that gay people fall under the umbrella <laughs> to be loved. Um, I don't think it's fair when you see a case, like I believe her name was Edith, where her, her um, marriage didn't really count when it came down to it and her wife died after 50 years and wow, she ended up wow. having to pay almost $400,000 That's That's because her marriage wasn't recognized as a marriage. Uh, and, you know, on paper, right. she couldn't, you know, say, this is my wife. So I thought that stuff like that makes right. it really sad mm -hmm. that gay people can't get the same rights right. as straight people can as when it comes to marriage. I don't see why you got to subject somebody. If they want to get married and be miserable, fine, let them do it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not saying that anybody, everybody's going to be divorced, but I'm like, really, is it that serious? I mean, mm -hmm. perhaps I'm just a little bit too open with it, but mm -hmm. if it's not hurting anybody, why not? I don't see the problem. Or if they love one another, you got people now in marriages don't love one another. What about our you know? community? Do you see it changing in our community? Absolutely Are we not. More acceptable? No. no. Because people, here's the thing. When you talk, start talking about gay marriages and talking about gay society, you have a lot of people that might be undercover themselves and haven't come out of the closet. And you have a lot of people that mm -hmm. are church related that don't want to hear that type of talk whatsoever. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they might be our parents age or whatever. So that 
they're just not ready to accept it. And that's why for so many years, when we look at James Baldwin and all these other people that were gay, mm -hmm. they had to keep it in the closet for years because our own community was not acceptable with that. And I really don't see that going forward. I think that we might say one thing, but our actions are going to speak definitely louder than our words. It <laughs> should never happen, especially to us black people, all of what we've gone through as a people. Why? Why should we even subject ourselves to something like that? Mm. God is not with that. Well, you, uh, some people will disagree with you on that. You know, they're gay. They would be very wrong. That's all I have to say, ma'am. Really, they would be very wrong. Okay. And it's terrible that they, they would even be allowed to do that. Okay, can I ask you this? Uh, what's your name again? I'm sorry. Mr. Day. Mr. Day. Can I? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I remember you. You called before, haven't you? Mr. Day, okay, maybe not. Maybe another Mr. Day. <laughs> Mr. Day, would you tolerate uh, a gay person? Would no. You, to you would not tolerate them? No. You would not sit beside them? You would not want them to no. do dental work on you? Or I would try or a doctor, to, all that? No, I would try to explain to them what the right <coughs> way is to do things in a better way because I'm terrible. You would try to... Tr Okay, all yeah, right. It's, it's not godly at all. God has no, God don't want to have anything to do with that. Hello? Hello. Hi, good afternoon. I'm calling from Manhattan. Hey, how you doing? What's your name again? My name is Miss Smith. Miss what? Smith. Oh, Miss Smith. Okay, what do you have to say? What question do you oh, want to ask? You know, I mean, this topic, believe me, I am from the Highlands. Yes. From the Highlands of mm -hmm. Jamaica. Mm-hmm. And I tell you something. Yeah. I mean, everybody know where we stand. Absolutely. And this gay thing. No about right. to go there. So where do you stand? <laughs> where do you stand? Now? Where do you stand? Believe me, they are people like you and I. Absolutely. And a lot of time, okay. I don't know for some people, but I am speaking from experience now. I tell you, I have a brother. I, I won't be long. Okay. <laughs> I have a brother. He's much, much younger than I am. And I remember the days when he used to come to my grandmother as a little boy when he was like four years old. And I remember my brother, okay. Junior, he okay. would not play with anything for boys. Okay. And I tell you something. Yeah. I mean, from that time, listen. My brother, I know something must have happened. Something he did not choose to be this way. Okay. That's what I'm saying. He okay. didn't choose to be this way. But you do accept him for who he is. Ms. Um, Ms. Smith, thank you. you. Have, Smith, thank so you for the call. <laughs> All right, thank you. I pray for that brother that just got off the phone because I couldn't read him, but it's the air, so I'm not going to do that. Ooh. But I will say this right here. Um, God made everybody last time I checked, he's dope true manufacturer of the world. <coughs> and believe me, I've been, as an openly gay male, you can look me up. I'm very well known. I'm recording all this, but I'll tell you this right here. I don't even want to start by having a preacher. I've been with a preacher and been with a deacon. So I know how they are and I know how they operate. And especially black Ooh. men, they have a real problem yeah. with being uh, with gay men. Yeah. Because Absolutely. a lot of yeah. the times when you, when you attack them or when you get in their presence, there's a natural attraction that they have, and they don't want you as a sister to recognize that. Really? So I will oh. keep, I'm going to keep it real cute right here because believe me. <laughs> hey. Believe me. We need to do it. Well, you but, should but, know. Like you should that, know. I want email the brother. Email you me. Email us. Email us. Yeah, <laughs> you we, bet. All right. Thank Sister you. Sister Brother Tom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. We need that. Okay. This is a, okay. So my name we, is Aaron Prince. A R O N P R I N C E. Hey, next topic is Beyonce. Bow uh -huh. down. Can we say bitches, Jay? Yes. yes. Say bitches. We can say bitches, Jay. All right. <laughs> Bow down, bitches. All right. Everybody's uptight about that. What's the big deal? That. Danielle? Well, uptight is not, I don't think is, is the right term there. I, I'm Christian. And God. so for me, I interpreted that song in that way. God said, bow to no man, right? Mm -hmm. And every knee shall bow to who? Right. To him, mm -hmm. not to Beyonce. And I think it's a little bit disrespectful for her to put out that type of song, which like she does it with so much venom. And it's, you got to wonder like, who's she talking to? Yeah, who is, is she, she talking, talking to? to these haters 
Is she talking to people who hacked into her tax, her tax information? Is she talking to people that used to date Jay Z? I have no idea. That's what I'm thinking. It, are there some women, you yeah, know, groupies messing like, with Jay Z? You, you dreamed of being in my world. You right. thought that I was his little wife. Like I don't understand what of those lyrics. Of course, she's talking to somebody. We yeah, just don't know who. It's yet. like who exactly <laughs> is this person? And if it mm. is a specific person, I just think it's such a weird thing to do to just put that out there in the public mm -hmm. as a brand new mother. And I know. Just because you're a mother and a wife, it doesn't mean that you have to be this Michelle Obama prototype. But she is on this platform right. that's yeah. much larger than yours or mine, and she has a responsibility. Whoa. Absolutely. She, she really? can't just sit here and say, because bow down that, bitches, right. when you have all these people that are looking at you and emulating you. Absolutely. Yeah, because I like that song, Irreplaceable, To the Left, what, I mean, mm -hmm. whatever the song. I love these empowerment songs mm -hmm. that she has. Carla, what do you have to say? Yes, um, about the Beyonce lyric, mm -hmm. a lot of people are saying that Beyonce is talking about all the other women in the R&B world. But why? Thing. She's saying that no <laughs> other woman in the R&B world as far as singing R&B uh, up to her level. So now she's telling all the R&B girls to bow down to the queen. What I don't appreciate about that whole, if she's talking to the women in R&B, mm -hmm. if you're great, you don't have to tell people you're great. Absolutely. Okay. If you're a queen, you don't have to tell people to bow yeah. down. Or as Beyonce likes to call herself the king, because I guess the queen doesn't get as much mm -hmm. recognition and power as the king does. Mm -hmm. So and that's also an interesting thing, because Beyonce, she has a lot of biblical references within her music. Oh, really? Her okay. last album, well, before four, I am, mm -hmm. dot, 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 Sasha Fears. Mm -hmm. I am is another word for God. Mm -hmm. I am, who sent you? Tell them I am that I am. Right. I always thought it was interesting that she used that type of terminology. Mm -hmm. And then to have this whole royal thing that she likes to play with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the king thing, like I mentioned before. It's very interesting, and I don't think it's coincidental. I don't think it's a mistake that okay. she uses these right. terms. Beyonce wants to be worshipped. It's not like <laughs> it's, it's, she just. I didn't say that. She <laughs> wants to be worshipped. Who calls himself a king as a female? Okay. Who tells people bow down, bitches, in a song, even if it's not a single on your next album okay. or whatever right. it is? Who puts that out there without wanting yeah. to be worshipped? What's your take on it? I'm not into promoting negativity to okay. our black women. <laughs> Sorry, I just, you know, a bitch is a female dog to me. So unless, you know, you've uh, taken something from me or you deserve a beat down, there's no reason for me. <laughs> but isn't it that, <laughs> that, that hip hop well, culture, I'm, I'm thinking she could get away with right. it right. because, I, I'm, I'm thinking she could get away with it because she's part of that hip hop Hip hop, but culture. you know, he stated he was never going to use the word bitch. Be again. So make up your mind. Right, they are so, confusing me. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Are I you? Agree. Are I, you anything that sorry. promotes negativity for our people and our youth? Yeah. I'm strictly not behind it. One of the reasons why is because as an educator and an activist, mm -hmm. I've been working with inner city at risk youth for a long time. When mm -hmm. you start condoning behavior like behavior like that, you're asking, you're telling the kids, "It's all right to call me bitch. Go on, go right okay. ahead." Yeah. Oh no, no, no. We ain't gonna have none of that. You're gonna call me Miss Nikki, and we're gonna get this class started. Don't get it twisted. And I think that a lot of the kids now they have a sense of lack of disrespect. Yeah. So when you bring a song like that out there and you're promoting negativity and to me it's negativity because if you can't refer to another woman as a queen as a sister when I see not Najma I go hey sister Najma mm -hmm. how you doing I don't go up to her and go hey bitch <laughs> Get who does that but yeah, a lot maybe. of people do I, yeah but and that goes back to that whole, that whole desensitization, desensitization okay. thing mm. because we're hearing it mm -hmm. and these kids just, are sitting here putting it all okay. over their social media statuses bow down bitches mm -hmm. and it's becoming less of a sting and more of a greeting Ooh. okay we gotta close up this, uh, um, you know, this is, was a great show. <laughs> yes, it is. This is Dietrich Kelsey, and I'm wishing you peace, love, and light.